So this gentleman that I'm about to show you, his name is Rahat Austin. And he is a Pakistani Christian dissident. And his story is uh, very heartbreaking. I have, um, I have his whole story in front of me, but I'm not going to be able to go through it all because uh, all of this has been done. Everyone has spoken about it. Or, or, well, actually, no, couldn't really speak about these things because he didn't want to antagonize the government of South Korea. Yes, South Korea. So let me give you a little bit of a backdrop. What, what are his crimes? His crime number one. He was born as a second class Christian citizen in the glorious Islamic Republic of Pakistan. That was his crime number one. So his crime number two was that he recognized this second class citizenship and he started speaking about it. He's highly educated. He's um, the, the two time most of Christians and Hindus in Pakistan are not really that educated. So those who are educated, uh, they realize all the, they go two ways. There are two way, two options in front of them. Either join the system and suck up, start sucking up to Pakistani system, or recognize the suffering that all the minorities of Pakistan are having and speak up against it. And so Rahat chose the second option. Um, as I said, he was he's highly educated. He could have taken any position in the Pakistani government um, as a token uh, minority representative. That, hey, look, everything's fine. Pakistan, long live Pakistan and all that. He could have done that. Some other Christians and Hindus do do it. But he chose the other option. Uh, for that, he got under um, a lot of trouble. He, he's living in a country where if you, if you are a nurse and you mention Jesus to dying patients, you can be humiliated, you can be uh, beaten up. Um, as uh, those of you um, who do watch my um, stream regularly, you would know uh, there was this story that I covered, I think three or four weeks ago, uh, where this Christian woman was beaten up, this Christian nurse was beaten up because she mentioned the name Jesus to dying people, uh, dying patients. Last week, we had another Christian nurse who was told by a Muslim woman to clean up a cupboard now that contained a sticker with Muhammad's name written on it and she t she took that off as well and then she was stabbed and arrested under blasphemy so um, and the person who stabbed her became a hero that also happens in Pakistan so in a country like that if you look at someone if you look at a Muslim the wrong way you can be accused of blasphemy so um, that's what happened to him he in 2016 he fled Pakistan and he went to Korea now that was his third crime that was his third mistake he went to Korea instead of a Western country um, his fourth crime is the fact that he's a brown Christian he's not a high-value Christian he's a man that's another reason um, international Christian organizations have not taken any interest in him that you know a humanist atheist is actually talking about it um, so Cut long story short, he fled to Korea. He was given state asylum in 2016. Um, he's been living in Korea for five years and uh, he was recognized as a refugee in 2018. Now that visa was only for three years and that visa is about to expire. And he was taken to the Korean immigration a couple of days ago. And he was told that on Monday he will be uh, deported back to Pakistan. Pakistan that has been actively hunting him for the last five years. To, to get these Pakistani thugs off his back, he even stopped his um, activism. He didn't, uh, I think he shut down his Twitter and everything. He had a large following. He gave up all of that just so uh, Pakistan will call off their dogs, but they haven't because now they think that they've got him. And as I said, in by Monday, less than 24 hours, he will be deported and he will be um, facing charges like high treason, blasphemy, and uh, the punishment for that is definitely death. While he was in Korea, 
this is what happened to him. He was attacked multiple times. Um, I spoke about this case a few months ago when he was beaten up. But instead of getting justice, instead of him being recognized as a victim, Korean police blamed him. Some Buddhist police officer said, well, you, you've taken part in violence and he was fined $3,000. And on top of that, you know, he had to pay his medical bills and all that. Fair enough. Everyone has to do it. Nobody owes uh, anyone a living. But instead of arresting the people who did that, and to make matters worse, he actually told me a few days before that some people are stalking him and something bad is going to happen. And then he was brutally beaten up. Um, no justice. Uh, okay, still, he told me don't talk about it because if uh, anyone speaks about it, and if we speak about this discrimination of the Korean government and the police, then he they might end up getting antagonized. In fact, when I made the video about a fundraiser for him, um, his police officer found, found out about it. And he said, oh, you're bringing disrepute to uh, South Korea. So, uh, you know, we're going to deport you and, you know, something bad. And some he, he could be arrested for it. So that's the reason why I took down that video. But now... There's no point because in less than 24 hours, he will be deported back to Pakistan. And as I said, he will be uh, taken to prison straight away. Um, and then even if they don't hang him, even though the charges that the state of Pakistan is pursuing um, have death penalty, even though they don't do it because of who knows if, if there is any international pressure or not, eventually um, he, his next 10, 12, 15 years are are wasted um, but this is happening right before our eyes if the UN can see this if anyone any of these organizations Christian organizations humanist organizations if any of these guys can see it now is the time to act now is the time to put a hold on his deportation he should not be deported because as I said if he's deported we we may never hear about him and not only him his family as well he has a young family. They will be deported as well. And as I said, it's, um, it's a crime to be a minority in Pakistan. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, now I'm going to ask all of you guys right to your local church. Um, you're going to use that as a reference. I'm going to take a sh shorter version of this and I'm going to put it up on Twitter. We need you guys to retweet it. You need to share this as much as possible. Send this case to your local church. Send an email to UNHCR. Tag UNHCR. Send an email to any uh, humanist organization that you know of. I, I'm not really that confident because if these guys, if nobody's did anything in the last five years nobody's going to do anything in the next 24 hours the person that i spoke with this person is um you know as you as you could imagine he's quite depressed um have uh, suicidal thoughts um i just try to you know uh, say anything that i could say to him uh, that just hang in there uh, the road might be bumpy ahead uh, but you know, there's, you got to keep walking. So please, if you can share this video, um, send this to your, as I said, local church or, uh, I'm, I'm shocked. Basically we, we, we don't even have a atheist activists don't have a lot of organizations behind them. Uh, it's still an evolving, um, it's an evolving movement. So therefore we don't have a presence as strong as some of the Christian organizations, but even Christian organizations have not done anything. Um, so, so when I upload it, please send it to David Wood as well. I don't know what David Wood can do, anything about it or not, but the last thing that we can do now is just speak up. If he's killed, if he ends up doing something silly, um, then at least he can be remembered and we can condemn and shame those people who are responsible for this. By the way, if you're having any um, suicidal thoughts, please uh, seek help, speak to someone. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what else can be done at this point. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal. 